you um you you got um you got a bowl game here against um some guys that are out. Um, is it almost like preparing for a um an opener in a way because um, because of the opt outs and things that you see on tape that you may not see in the game? Well, not really. Uh, from a personnel standpoint, it could be the case, but from a schematic standpoint, not really. You know, they're gonna run what they're gonna run, and whoever the guys that replace the guys that opted out of. You know, they'll do the same thing and, you know, and they'll be simple in their approach because some of the guys that have opted out, at least defensively, pretty much taking all of the snaps. So you can't really imagine that they'll ask them to do anything different than what they've been doing. So as you watch their film, why do you think they struggled so much against the run in the second half? Of the game? I couldn't tell you. I don't know. They might be able to tell you that. I couldn't tell you. I really couldn't tell you. I don't know. I hadn't watched them in that regard to see uh, the answer to that question. Big up front, is that what you yeah. see on tape, big up front? Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. really good size up front, across the board, uh, which matches up really well with us as well. Obviously, Fraser's been out, but we, we got great size up front too. But uh, So, it'll be a similar game that we've had all season long where we, you know, going to tell our offense that, and defense that it's going to be a battle of the trenches, man. You know, both teams want to run the ball and be physical up front, so that's where it's going to – that's where the game's going to lie. I was asking um, Jaheim before you got in here about – uh, the nucleus of skill players that you guys have intact coming back, mm -hmm. what what you've got coming back and what you're bringing in. Yeah. And do, do you feel, do you sense something special kind of building with what you've got and what you expect to have next year? Absolutely. Very much so. And, and the chemistry they have as well, on and off the football field. And, and, it's, and it's really just a, it's just a tip of the iceberg with those guys, you know, just to see what they're capable of doing and, and, and you, I mean, we're getting a, you guys got a great glimpse of it the last seven games of the season. We're still getting a glimpse of it right now. It's going through bowl practices where they're playing for one another. But it's it's going to be a special group. And like I said, what makes it even more special is the talent they have, but the camaraderie that they have as well. And they want to go out there and perform well for one another. Like they want to go block on the perimeter for Jaheen to run the ball. He wants to do a great job in pass pro to allow those guys to get vertical downfield and create one-on-one -on -one opportunities. So I do feel something special, bro. Good selling point when you're out there. I mean, um, you can tell a kid, hey, listen, um, we got these guys. If you come and join them, this is what we can be. Absolutely. Huge selling point. That's, that's exactly what we're selling. And, you know, uh, we do a phenomenal job playing fast and being efficient with plays and keeping the change moving so we're able to get more plays. The more plays we get, the more opportunities guys get. And I'm always talking to those guys about being special with the ball. So, not only are they getting opportunities, but it's not taking like a number, of, a lot of opportunities to be very efficient with the football. You know, they're averaging, you know, pretty decent amount of yards per catch. You know, obviously Jaheen's run, averaging pretty decent amount of yards per carry. So they're being very efficient with the ball. So it's allowing guys to, more guys to get opportunities as well. I was joking with Garrett um, about uh, lobbying to play a little more two minute offense next year <laughs> um, because he's so good at the end oh, of half, yeah. man, again. Is that a consideration, something, I mean, because he's so instinctive and because he's such a reactive player, um, he's really at his best when – is that is that something you guys will, will consider and talk about a little bit? when? The yeah, we will. Is? Well, that's one of the reasons why we try to play with tempo. You know, he plays uh, – you know, we, we, we do a phenomenal job in practice uh, simulating that, you know, that happens in the game. And so, we get in the game, it's like rehearsal for those guys. But – it is something we talk about, but we actually try to uh, emulate that in you know an actual game play by playing fast, because he responds to that really well and he does a phenomenal job of handling it really well. And then our guys around him do a great job of getting lined up fast and getting set so he can see what he needs to see to execute. Kind of makes it easier as a coach too in terms of planning because you don't have you don't have time to sit there and think about scenarios. You just go play, play right, fast. Right. And the beauty of it is to be able to do what we're doing, playing that fast, we not we don't have to be as complicated. Because we got the right guys on the field. And what I mean by the right guys, I've talked to you guys early on about, you know, playing the most productive player. So the right guys are on the field. And so we don't have to be, you know, as complex with what we're calling because of the talent we got on the football field and the talent he has around him. You know, so we get honest defenses and those guys with their talent and ability go out there and win the one on ones. What do you think about uh, Brandon at center? And where we go. When you say what I think about it. When you say what I think about it, what do you mean? Just like, you know, this is going to be his first time. He played a little bit at the end of Baylor, but right. his first time, you know. Well, we've done – Coach Moore's done a great job uh, really way back dating back to spring ball. Uh, you know, times when uh, Zach might not have been in or we went with the twos and, and, 
and the Yates plays. He stayed in and played center for the two. So he's gotten a lot of reps playing it. Not as obviously not you know a lot in the game play, but uh you know in practice settings and scrimmage settings. But we back in spring ball and fall camp, and he's got a lot of work at it. So we're we're all good, man. Yeah, we're all good. And he's been doing a phenomenal job in these bowl practices, right? Snapping the ball really well. Today we got a uh, today was a really intense practice where we uh almost made it very similar to what we've done in the uh like on a Wednesday uh, game week during the season and. Everything's all good. Approach these games. Do you approach it as the end of this year, or is it more the beginning of next year? I mean, it's different. Bowl uh, games used to be the end of the year, right? But the way the the game has changed, is it more beginning of next year? Oh, uh, no. For for me, I'm personally like it's a, the end of the season. We got to fin. We need to finish. You know, we we need, we need to finish. We're still low in the, in a mindset where we still have to prove guys wrong, and uh, so we're we need to finish. And now it is uh you know start of you know what's to come because obviously we know we're getting a lot of work with the younger guys. It's like having extra spring ball, so you know like younger guys to get some reps and guys that you know hadn't you know played as much getting a lot of reps uh to get ready. But uh we still in that mindset where we got to finish this season off. Yeah, a lot of conversation around. Beanie defensively becoming the 13th consensus All-American yeah. and how the coaching staff and Brown talked about they can use that for future recruits, Absolutely. especially defensive backs in the portal. Mm -hmm. uh, who would be that guy that you could use that took that jump by coming to West Virginia? I'd imagine Cole Taylor maybe would be off the top of my head one that you could bring up. Like, How are you going to use that on offensive players from what you did in the portal to say, hey, come here and you right. have success? You said it exactly. For us, it would be Cole Taylor. Uh, coming in and making an impact. And with both of those guys, with uh, Benny and Cole, they had the right mindset when they came in this summer. When I mean by the right mindset, they were wherever they've been in the past. It was no when I was here or when I was there. And when they came here, they, was all, they were all in. And, you know, they had a you know clear mindset that they wanted to come here and, and be the best version of themselves here at West Virginia and not saying what they did there and did any of the comparison stuff. And I always think the guys that come in, with a clean mindset of ready to move forward and be all in, gives them guys, gives themselves the best chance to, to be as successful as they could possibly be. And I think both of those guys had that right mindset early on when they first got here. But Cole Taylor would be that guy. Does that kind of guide your, um, your uh, uh, approach? I mean, Beanie came up here and said, listen, um, a lot of guys, they go because they're looking for the money. They're looking mm -hmm. for the NL money. I came because I want to be a better football player. Right. And I did. Does that, does that, how you guys approach it, we're going to go look for the guys that want to be better football players. Absolutely, and we want also to go for the guys. You know, obviously we got to we want to you know get you know a great player out of it, but you also want to get a guy that you know fits who we are too. You know, I think the culture of our locker room is has changed tremendously, man. Just the culture of this whole football team, and so we also want to get the right kind of guy. And those two guys got the right mindset to come in and and blend well with you know you know the, you know our mentality, who we are as a football team now, and. And not not something that can you know disrupt what we establish. If you look at it from the totality, not just Beanie and Cole, but your place kicker, there have been a lot of guys. You hit on a lot of guys this past year. Yeah, exactly right. Michael Hayes and who else? Are. Yeah. I mean, is that I mean, does that kind of put the pressure on you? Okay, we got to do that again this year to, or or, or do you well, look at it as a way? Okay, if we can't get immediate guys, get guys to fill in spots that we need and yeah. develop. Well, if it's if we need an immediate guy, we, we need to come get a guy now. Now, if it's not an immediate guy, in my mind, I'd rather you know recruit a guy to high school. If it's not an immediate guy, but uh, if it's an immediate guy, you got to get the guy out of the portal, and you hope to, you know, it happens so fast, you got to get on those guys right away, so you give yourself a chance to get the guy that can come help you. Well, I mean, in, in, in the case of, I know it's a different position, but Beanie came here in June or right. whatever it was, right. and became a consensus All American in four right. months, and didn't even have any time for momentum to pr uh, promote him or anything. He right. just came out and performed. That's pretty rare. Yeah, it is rare. And then sometimes, you know, man, I just, I'm just speaking like in his situation, maybe, uh, you know, it's about you know, guys being in the right environment where they feel like they got opportunity to flourish. Uh, I believe the, the environment we have here is more of a supportive environment, even where the, the criticism they do they may have is constructive. So they can learn from it and, and grow from it and still have an opportunity to go flourish as opposed to it being a destructive environment. So maybe sometimes guys that jump in the portal may not feel like they're they're given a you know proper opportunity or maybe they're not be in an environment that they feel like is supportive enough for them to go flourish. And that's the kind of environment that we have around here because uh, he's a talented player. So I'm pretty sure 
for a guy to be a consensus All-American, he ain't all of a sudden just turned on overnight, man. He's been a good player. Well, is there enough hungry guys out there today to find those guys? Are there enough? Yeah, I think it is. You got to find them, though. It's, it's not as – I don't believe it is, it's as many as it has in the past, uh, but I do think there are some out there. And we just got to do a great job of digging to find them. Sometimes it's guys like that that feel – you know, like, for example, like a Jaheen White, you know, could be one of those guys you got to do a great job digging and finding that feel like they've been slighted uh, and overlooked. And then those guys, you know, they they take that as a knock. And then that's a, that ends up being like a chip on their shoulder that, you know, just they just kind of carry with them and allows them to go play that much, you know, harder, you know, that much more determined to go prove people wrong, you know. So you just got to do a great job of finding those guys. You can't be scared sometimes to go recruit a kid and trust your own eyes that what you watched on film and what you watched when you went and saw that kid perform, whether it be in practice or a game, that what you saw, you actually liked that he fits. And just because he may not have the offers attached to it, you know, don't allow that to scare you away, but trust your own evaluation of that kid and that he is what you guys need and that fits in your program that can do it. And then put your arm around him and remind him, hey, you were overlooked. Exactly. <laughs> and that's 100% you remind fact. remind him all the time. Ain't no doubt. Yeah. For DJ, it's, uh, it's been a really good year for him. He's grown a lot, uh, a lot. And uh, I can remember when he first came in, you know, came in, I don't want to say later, but, you know, as opposed to guys that come in early summertime, came in a little later, struggled a little bit at first, you know, just understanding the offense, whatnot, and, and just that. But he's mature, very mature kid. So, you know, took everything, guys are like a, you know, learn less an opportunity to grow. But from where he was when they started to where he is right now, just in terms of his overall level of, uh, confidence is comfort. It's on t a whole different level right now. The one area where he's always been really good at, you know, is uh, pass protection. Just in terms of the recognition, he's been really good at that. But uh, just in terms of his overall, just confidence and knowing what to do per play and and where he is right now, man, it's, he's made a you know huge jump from where he was now to then. Even in terms of just changing, like his body, still a really big kid, but he's leaned up a lot more and and he's explosive. So um, he's fun I, to watch. I don't know what how long of a conversation was, but he could have played in Furness Richard. He's playing special teams fairly right. fairly consistently, I think, at some point. Just mm -hmm. the conversation with him, was, was it easy? Did he want to play? Did he understand? Yeah, he understood. Yeah. He understood. Yeah. And he's just a really – he's a great football player. Just, a, you know, he, obviously he's running back, but, you know, he picks up on, you know, they, special teams drills, any of those drills. He picks up on it, you know, with ease. He's just, But he did understand it. And obviously, this, this, this with the NCAA rules uh, allowing those guys to play this game and not and not count as a fifth game, that's huge. Did you know that before? I know that they haven't really they haven't been that clarified until recently. But like, did he did he think a bowl was a possibility? Is he relieved now that he knows he can play and keep the yeah. year? Yeah. Okay. And then enough practice for him to be a factor on offense, special teams. I'm guessing, but yeah, yeah, absolutely. He, he's been playing. Yeah. yeah, he's been playing. You know, right now we just got three of them, uh, so he's been getting a lot of reps. He's been do, he's been doing really well too. And the you know, first two, the first uh, day or so, uh, first day or two or so, he was a little, a little you know, like not want to say not tentative, but just hesitant, you know what I mean? And now that he's running our offense, been obviously on the scout team, and and today, man, he turned loose. I told him just go out there and just go play ball, just go let it loose, play confidently. Don't worry about. I don't tell him fell up. Don't worry about you know failing. Just go play ball. And he had a really good day today. He's had a good you know couple of days of practice, but today was his best day by far. How dynamic does he make the running back room when obviously you know, he and Jaheim are two different styles of running backs yeah. and then going into next year you'll have those two plus CJ right. for, for most Very games. Very dynamic because he's, uh, he's, he's the same size as CJ, but he is fast. He can, like, he can legit run. It's so funny, like when I tell you guys that, you probably see how big he is. You probably look at me like, really? And that's what all the guys on the football team thought too until they see him run. Like he can legit run. He's extremely powerful. He's strong. You know, he's a power lifter in high school, so he's, he's naturally strong, bends really well. The one area of improvement, speaking of improvement, when he first got here, you know, his hands, he, his hands wasn't, weren't the best at all. And they didn't ask him to catch the ball a lot of high school. He's really improved on catching the football. That would be his biggest improvement is catching the football. But he's extremely fast. It's going to be an interesting dynamic because he can legit run, like, like take it to the house, uh, legit run. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate it. Thank you all.